Hi, I'm Chris with the irrigation information website smartirrigation.com and today we have a guest technician who's going to show you how to program a hunter controller and avoid some of the common programming mistakes. Hi, my name is Justin and I'll be walking you through how to program any hunter controller that has the central control dial, as well as how to avoid the most common programming mistakes that we see in the field. Today, I'll be using the Hunter X2 controller as an example, but everything I show you will work also on the popular X-Core series, the commercial Pro-C series, and even the 20-year-old Hunter SRS and EC controllers. As you can see, the options around the dial are almost identical, except for a few differences that won't make a difference in the basic programming we'll be doing today. First, let's look at the layout of these dial-based controllers. In the middle of the controller is the control dial. The narrow point of the center dial indicates which menu item is selected from the outer options here. We interact with the selected menu item by using the controls at the top right hand corner of the controller. These include the left and the right arrow, the plus and the minus buttons, as well as the program button labeled PRG. We'll talk about this button a little later. Now that we're familiar with the controls, the first thing you always want to check when programming your controller is to make sure the date and time are correct. So let's use the control dial to select the date and time menu and we'll go through and set up each of these items. So the first option in this menu is the year. So let's use the plus and minus buttons to select the correct year. Then we can use the right arrow and we'll move on to the next item which is the month. So again using the plus and minus arrows we can select the right month, right arrow, and then we can select the proper day. We can see that that actually has the day of the week here at the bottom listed. We use the right arrow to go to the next item. The next item is the time format. So we can either select 24 hours or we can select AM or PM. One of the most common mistakes that we see is that AM and PM on the clock are switched. So pay extra attention to the setting or use the 24 hour setting if you prefer. The next setting is the hour then we can set the time. If you hold down the button, it'll scroll through the items faster. Another important tip is to make sure you change your controller's time with daylight savings time. We push the right arrow again and we're back to the year. With the date and the time set, you can now start setting up your irrigation program. Sprinklers are typically grouped into different zones, with each zone being run by a different valve. In a program, the selected zones run one at a time, one after another, starting at a particular time. We have more information about zones in our article on zone charts, which can be found at smartirrigation.com if you'd like some more information. So the start time of this program, which is when the first zone begins running, is controlled by the next menu on the dial called start times. If we select that, we can see that we have a small clock showing up on the dial there, and that just helps remind us of which menu item we're in. Here, we set the start time for the entire irrigation program for that first zone to start running. For example, we can enter a start time of 2.15 a.m. by using the plus or minus. There we go, we have a.m. set and 2.15. The one that is to the left of the time here indicates that we are setting up the first start time. Most irrigation programs should only have one start time. If you end up adding a second or third start time, your sprinklers will now be running two or three times a day. In most cases, the rest of these run times should be off, so we can check that using the arrows here. And if one is on, we can find off just before midnight. The A that is being displayed here shows that we are setting the start time for program A, 
You can control which program you are adjusting by pressing the PRG button on the controller. You can achieve complex watering schedules by combining multiple programs together, which we might help guide you through in a later video. But for now, we will focus on setting up a simple irrigation program running just under program A. One of the most common mistakes that we come across when people complain that their sprinklers are running at unexpected times is that multiple start times have been set, or multiple programs have been set, by mistake. Therefore, it's always helpful to quickly cycle through these to make sure that you only have one start time under program A and that the rest say off. Next, we need to control which zones will be turning on for this program and for how long each one of them will run. To do this, we will select the Runtime menu with the control dial. And we can see here a small hourglass is going to be in the display. Again, you want to check to make sure that the correct program is selected by making sure that A is showing in the display. The one to the left is referring to the valve which is wired into the number one slot of this controller and the time that we enter will be how long that zone of sprinklers will be running in minutes and then in hours. Since zone one is a set of rotors in a sunny area let's set this runtime to 50 minutes using the plus and minus buttons. Again you can hold down the plus button to get through the numbers a little quicker. Next, we can select zone 2 with the right arrow. You see the two showing up. And since this zone is a spray zone in a shady area, let's set the runtime for 10 minutes. If you would like some guidance on selecting the proper runtimes for your irrigation zones, check out our article on watering times on our website at smartirrigation.com. This is an eight zone controller, so we'll have options for programming eight different zones. If you continue scrolling past that last zone with the right arrow, an A will appear. This stands for all. The number shown is how long it will take for all the zones to run in the program. Here we see that the combined runtime of all of our zones is one hour. So now we know that our program will start at 2.15 a.m. and it will run until 3.15 a.m. Finally, we need to set up on which days we want our program to run. To do this, we will select the watering days menu with the control dial. Again, we want to make sure that we're setting this up on the correct program, so we're looking for that A to be displayed. The first option that comes up is to simply select which days of the week you would like to, or are allowed to, have this irrigation program run. Here we see the days of the week listed, Monday through Sunday, and then we can use the right and the left arrows to select the days of the week with the flashing raindrop, and then the plus and the minus buttons to either turn on or turn off those watering days. A watering day is indicated by a water drop, and a day that won't water is indicated by a dash. This setup for watering days is the most easy to work with, so that's what we're going to be using. Let's select a Monday, Wednesday, Friday watering schedule using the arrows. So we'll make sure Monday is selected with the raindrop. We'll go to Tuesday, minus arrow to turn it off. Wednesday is on. Thursday is off. Friday plus arrow to turn on. Saturday and Sunday, we'll use the minus buttons as well. If you use the arrows to continue to the right, past Sunday, you'll be brought to the next option for watering days, which is even or odd day watering. You can select between even or odd day watering using the plus or minus sign, and it says odd or even in the bottom there. For example, if even day watering is selected, your program will run every second day on days of the month that are even numbers, such as the second, the fourth, and the sixth of the month. If you use the arrows to continue past this option, you will be brought into the interval watering menu. 
Setting this up is a bit more advanced, and we won't be covering it in this video, but if you would like us to make a video on properly setting up interval watering, let us know in the comments below. For this program, let's use the arrows to go through the interval watering here, and go back to the weekly watering schedule. When we have the raindrop shown up there, we're back to our Monday, Wednesday, Friday watering schedule. Now that we've created our program, the last thing we want to do is move the control dial to the seasonal adjust menu here. And we want to make sure that this value is where we want it. This setting allows you to quickly adjust the watering times of all the zones up or down, which can be helpful if it's been a particularly hot or wet month. At 100% here, the sprinklers will be running for their originally programmed time. But if it has been a particularly hot month, we might want to increase watering by 30%. So we would use the plus button here to move it to 130%. Now our first zone will be watering for 65 minutes, and our second zone will be watering for 13. When you adjust the seasonal adjust, the run times actually change in the menu, as we can see by flipping back to the run times menu here. Can see that we're running for an hour and five minutes for zone one, 13 minutes for zone two, and the entire program will now take an hour and 18 minutes. Just be careful to make sure that this menu is set where you want, otherwise your program might be watering for longer or shorter than you had originally intended. On some controllers, like the X-Core controller, with the dial set to run, the seasonal adjust is sometimes represented by a set of vertical bars to the side here. And there you have it. You've properly set up your basic irrigation program while avoiding some of the most common problems that we experience in the field. Finally, before you leave your controller, you want to make sure to tell the controller whether you would like it to run or not. If you do not want the controller to run for now, turn the dial to the off position. Otherwise, if you'd like the program to run during the next scheduled watering, make sure the central control dial is turned to the top run position like this. There you have it. Now you know how to program your Hunter controller while avoiding many of the common programming mistakes. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And remember to hit like and subscribe. And for more smart irrigation tips, Check out our website at smartirrigation.com.